Welcome to Kid Missing TV. I'm your host, Angelina Wilson. This is the case of Marion Joan McDowell, which caught my attention because McDowell is one of my family names. Um, she disappeared on the 6th day of December 1953 from Scarborough, Ontario, Canada. She was 17 years old, just 5 feet 3 inches, 130 pounds, had blonde hair and blue eyes. Distinguishing feature, she had a round face. Okay, that's not very distinguishing, but her teeth were in good condition. They don't have DNA or fingerprints. Um, she was wearing a white blouse with black or blue trim, a black wool pleated skirt, black ballerina shoes, a silver chain with a heart worn on her wrist, and a ring on her left hand, <coughs> initials MM. And then it says jewelry unknown. Well, you just described her jewelry, dummy. Um, Jimmy Wilson, 19, picked her up for a date. They drove Jimmy's 1942 five-passenger Plymouth Coupe to a few miles within Scarborough. They pulled off a quiet road. And they were confronted by a person who opened the passenger side door and barked, this is a stick-up. Jimmy was told to hand over his wallet. The bandit took $10 before ordering Jimmy to turn around. Jimmy was then hit over the back of the head twice with the butt end of a handgun, which later required 17 stitches. He woke up in and out of consciousness. One image was being in the back of the coupe with Marion's body sprawled across him. The next image was being parked in a lot three car lengths behind another car. Jimmy saw someone close the trunk of the other car um, before driving off. Um, when the car left, he crawled into the driver's seat of his car and drove to the police station. Uh, Jimmy passed the lie detector test, which he went all the way to Buffalo, New York for. Um, that and his injuries cleared him. The suspect was about five foot eight, with a narrow face. He wore a dark balaclava mask and brandished what appeared to be a Walther 38 caliber or a Luger. Miriam was a tomboy, boisterous and outgoing, they said. Her hobbies were tennis, swimming, roller skating, pinball, and music. She had previously worked at a department store and a bank. She was once an invoice typist for a printing firm. Schoolboys, Boy Scouts, motorcycle groups, and soldiers all joined in the search. Um, but they found Okay, the Toronto Daily Star from December 19th on page 3 wrote, No cranny unvisited as score seat girl in Scarborough. Um, the headline referred to crank calls and the family of Marion McDowell that the family of Marion McDowell received after her disappearance. Jimmy had quite a concussion. Um, okay, here's what some of the horrible calls to the family said. 
This is the kidnapper. I'm getting ready to murder your daughter. Before breaking into maniacal laughter. During several such calls, Ross Sr., that's her dad, could hear voices in the background saying, let's kill her now. One person, hoping to profit from the family's grief, sent a note to police stating he had valuable information which would be divulged if $50,000 in $2 bills was dropped at the corner of Don Mills Road <coughs> and Young Street, Y-O-N-G-E. -Y Marion's father arrived at the appointed place, but no one turned up. A Toronto astrologer and, and he went to psychic school. Described the suspect as a former false friend of short stature. Um, they brought in a former chief of Scotland Yard to work the case. Um, The psychic also said she lays in a creek over a stone bridge not far from where she was found. I mean, not far from where she was taken. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Unfortunately, the guy from Scotland Yard did not find anything that would help them. Marion's uh, only sibling, Ross Jr., who was 21 when she disappeared, would go on to join the East York Police Department the summer following Marion's disappearance in what would prove a lifelong career as well as an unending search for his missing sister. That's so sad. Um, if you have any information, you can call the Toronto Police Service at 416-808-2222, 416-808-2222. Um, interestingly, Don Mills is a section of Toronto that I've actually heard of. It's, in, it's a, a slightly upper crust section of Toronto. Um, Probably Piper actually lived there. Um, when he was young. So, thank you so much for joining me. Please consider hitting that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye, guys. Mwah.